I found a problem. It's a common problem that can occur in both Fusion 360 and Plasticity. If you've ever spent any time modeling at all in either program, it's likely that you have come up against this. And here's how I did. I had a subscriber give me a paid commission for a project that I'm truly excited about. This subscriber is an experimental aircraft builder and he's planning on showcasing his new airplane at the EAA Air Venture Air Show in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. But he had a problem. He had a newly built plane, yet the cowling and nose bowl looked like a design stolen from the 1940s. Think Piper Cub. So a redesign was in order, and that's where I came in. I gave this plane a facelift, and he and I were both happy with the results. But the last thing he said was, thicken the body to 3 millimeters and slice it up to fit the build plate of a 3D printer. So I did, or at least attempted to, and immediately got hit with a dreaded fail. Now just to make sure that I tried everything, I ran the same command and the same model in both Fusion 360 and Plasticity. Normally, Plasticity does a little bit better job with this sort of thing, but in this case, they both failed. Oh, Plasticity, we were becoming such good friends. Actually, we still are. In fact, I love Plasticity, and you will too if you give it a shot. There's a link for a free trial in my description. I'm curious, though, have you had similar failures when attempting to thicken surfaces? I'd love to hear your suggestions and workarounds in the comments. But I do have a few of my own, and I'm going to show them to you here in both programs. To understand what is going on here, I think we need to understand a basic truth about both Plasticity and Fusion 360. Unlike, say, Blender, these programs are truly engineering programs geared toward making manufacturable parts. Sometimes, if we ask something of these programs that breaks that rule, the program just cannot provide a solution. And in this case, perhaps simply looking at some two-dimensional line work can illustrate the problem clearly. For those familiar with sheet metal working, you understand that there are certain minimum bend radiuses that are physically possible and must be allowed for. And I think this is a good way to illustrate this problem. Let's just say these two lines that we're looking at on the screen represent our material. And let's say they're three millimeters in thickness. Now I have the ability to introduce arcs in this material and the radius of that arc from one side to the next will simply be the same radius plus or minus the thickness of the part. But what if I wanted to bend the outside edge to exactly three millimeters? What happens on that inside edge? There's no longer a radius at all. Now with sheet metal tools, we can't even get anywhere close to these numbers as there will always be minimum bending radiuses to ensure that this real world material actually has somewhere to go. With additive manufacturing, we're not limited by this so much. However, both Plasticity and Fusion 360 software are producing some incredible math in an attempt to heal, so to speak, the part. Once we push the tolerances to a point where line or curve segments must be removed, we likely have geometry that's going to fail. In the case of my nose cone, the vast majority of this nose cone really had no trouble. Since I had to already slice the model up to build plate size parts, it became easy for me to spot where the failure was occurring. And this is going to be my first suggestion to help identify where the problem area is occurring. Slice a part up. Look for likely problem spots, height areas. In my case, I was able to narrow it down to the tiny curves wrapping around this lower intake. Once I chose to thicken the part to three millimeters, the geometry on the inside could no longer match the geometry on the outside, thus the dreaded fail. But how do I fix this? Well, you have two choices. One, simply plan ahead and ensure that any curvature that you put into a part is large enough to not cause a geometry change when thickened to the inside. Or, in my case, because I'm 3D printing essentially a male mold, I don't care about the inside geometry matching and I simply modified it. So my fix essentially is to, in the surface mode, cut the interior geometry back and give a new loft on the inside areas. 
I'm going to turn some tunes on and let you watch through both my attempt in fusion and then plasticity. It'll be a bit of a speed run, but I'll try to comment here on what I'm doing. So I've already gone through fail one and I'm just using the offset command and it failed on me again. I wasn't convinced the first time. And then fusion crash. So our quick reboot here. Let's try it again. I'm going to change a little bit what I'm doing. I'm exploding some of these components and now I'm going to offset, not components, but faces. Now I offset them individually. So I was able to succeed there. And now I'm doing this for the outer lip of it and fail number three. So again, I exploded these faces and then I was able um, to successfully do it. Now I'm kind of cleaning things up and joining them together. Now I'm cutting this scoop back to allow myself a, a little bit more of a radius. I'm doing the same for the inside area right here and I will simply loft this. And since it's on the inside, it won't be printed. I don't care really about the shape. I'm just trying to get this thing into a solid body. Once I have some of this joined together, then I'm simply using the patch tool. And there it was, that's a finished solid. Now here we are in plasticity. Kind of the same process. I'm going to cut this back and learned what I learned from on the Fusion one. And now I'm able to just offset this in and I will then, the problem piece was at the bottom. I'm lofting a new piece over. All good there. Here you can see me again cutting the front of the inside piece of the scoop. And now I'm simply mirroring that inside piece to the other side. And again, I'm going to do the loft command here. Once I got a little bit of this, I join it together so it is one body. And then I'm going to loft the bottom. And then on the sides, I'm simply going to use the patch tool. Bring those in. And I could have mirrored it, but I'm doing the patch tool again here. So that is all put together. Now we need to, I'm going to put one loft in the back. Join these. And then now I should be able to use the patch tool again. Yep, right there, got the whole thing done. And all that's left is this outer ring. I'm gonna do a single loft with G0, join it, and now I can again use the patch tool. And we've got oh, this little area here. Okay. Now I'll join that. Patch tool, patch tool, and we have a solid model. So, thanks for sticking with me on this. This can now be put back into the main uh, nose bowl uh, that we had originally designed, and uh, we've got our full solid body part ready for printing. Remember, if you'd like to try plasticity, check the link in my description. Also, there's a discount code Red Baron. That saves you 10% off and helps my channel. Thanks for watching, guys.